The Nasdaq loses 0.85%, the S&P 500 falls 0.66%, and the Dow slips 0.3%. The losses end a two-day winning streak, though all three averages are still up for the week. The 10-year Treasury yield jumped sharply on Wednesday and traded as high as 4.136%. Before we continue, if you enjoyed watching the video, please share your thoughts by clicking the like button and writing them in the comments section below. If you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell, you will be among the first people to find out when new videos are published on the channel. So let's just get started. In September, the number of housing starts dropped by 8.1% month over month to 1.439 million, reversing an unexpected increase seen in August. The boom was felt most strongly in the West, which is also where the slowdown has been felt to a greater extent. The number of new starts for single-family homes has decreased by 30% in comparison to this time last year. The number of new home construction projects and new building permits issued has been on a downward trend throughout the entire year. Consumer prices rose half a percent from August, while core consumer prices edged up 0.6 percent, both a little higher than expected. The rise in prices was driven largely by housing costs, as the Bank of England's interest rate hikes fed through into mortgage costs. Producer price inflation slowed to 0.2%, bringing the annual PPI down to 15.9% from 16.4%. Some relief came from the usual drop in airfares at the end of the summer holidays and from a further drop in vehicle fuel prices. The European Central Bank should lift borrowing costs by 75 basis points at its next two meetings in October and December, according to Governing Council member Bosch Jan Val. Doing so would bring euro area interest rates close to what we estimate is a level that's neither accommodative nor restrictive, the Slovenian Central Bank governor said Wednesday in an interview. It would also open the debate for further steps like shrinking the ECB's balance sheet, he said. We will have to think about shrinking the balance sheet, probably in 2023. Facing inflation of almost 10%, ECB officials are expected to repeat September's three-quarter point boost to interest rates when they meet next week. The annual rate of inflation in Canada fell to 6.9% in September, which was a fraction of a percentage point lower than anticipated. Prices increased by 5.4% when food and energy were taken out of the equation, compared to a rise of 5.3% in August. Next week, most people anticipate that the Bank of Canada will increase its key interest rate, also known as the policy rate. Following the publication of the inflation data, wages on a move of 75 basis points increased across the money markets. Hong Kong Chief Executive John Lee on Wednesday announced plans to attract talent and investment to the Asian financial hub. In his first policy address since taking office in July, Lee said the government will set aside $3.8 billion to attract businesses to the city. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index advanced slightly in early trade but gave up gains ahead of the speech. Hong Kong's new leader Tsai Leung Chun Ying has said his first target is to implement reverse quarantine in Hong Kong, also known as pre-departure quarantine. The former British colony was a British colony before it was handed to China in 1997. Lee won 1,416 votes to become Hong Kong's top leader in May's election.
Tesla reported third quarter earnings after the bell on Wednesday. Revenue fell just short of expectations to $21.45 billion, with shares down 6%. Companies' deliveries for the quarter reached 343,000 and vehicle production reached 365,000. Tesla is working to reach full capacity production levels at two new factories in Germany and Texas. Chief Executive Elon Musk is in the midst of a $44 billion acquisition of the social networking giant Twitter. Analysts expect investors to focus on Tesla's fourth quarter outlook for deliveries and gross margins. The maker of Tide detergent, Charmant Oil at Paper and Pampers Diapers reported better than expected earnings and revenue. The company said it's expecting foreign currency to hit its fiscal 2023 results more than previously expected. It now expects net sales for the year to decline 1% to 3%, lower than its previous outlook of flat to up 2%. The stock rose 2% in morning trading. Consumer products giant Procter & Gamble PG, saw a 1% drop in volume for the three-month period ended September 30. The company's gross margin fell 1.6% compared with the year-ago period, weighed down by higher freight and commodity costs. P&G's grooming business, which includes Gillette and Venus razors, was the only unit to report volume growth. Nestle SA, 6 Nessin, has reported positive nine-month sales volumes despite supply chain issues and ongoing product price rises in response to soaring inflation. Real internal growth for the first three quarters of 2022 came in at 1%, down from 6% in the corresponding period last year. The figure also excludes results from the Russia region, where the world's largest food company moved to halt much of its sales earlier this year following the outbreak of the war in Ukraine. Pricing for its items rose by 7.5%, as the food company continued to pass the impact of significant input cost inflation on to customers. ASML, as, ASML, stock rose in early trading on Wednesday after the Dutch-based lithographer said it won't be badly affected by the latest US restrictions on sales of silicon chips to China. ASML, which makes the machines that manufacture high-end semiconductors, has been pressured by Washington to withhold its state-of-the-art extreme ultraviolet or youth machines from Chinese customers, as a result of the growing hostility between the US and China. ASML stock rose 6.9% in Amsterdam by 4 o'clock ET, 8 o'clock GMT. The stock has still been unable to resist the downward trend in technology names this year, and is down 40% year to date. The dollar bounced from two-week lows on Wednesday as Treasury yields rose to 14-year highs. The greenback also hit a 32-year peak against the yen and approached the 150 level where some traders think the Bank of Japan might intervene. Sterling weakened after hotter-than-expected UK consumer price inflation and fears of a deeper recession in Britain. The BOE could increase rates by 75 basis points rather than 100 bits per second at its November meeting. Japanese Finance Minister Shunichi Suzuki said on Wednesday that he was checking currency rates meticulously and with more frequency. Crude oil inventories dropped by 1.725 million barrels, against expectations for a build of 1.38 million barrels. The AIM also reported that distillate stockpiles rose by 0.124 million barrels last week. President Joe Biden is slated to announce later on Wednesday a further release of 15 million barrels from the SPR. Music